Uh, happy to talk about think tanks for a minute because I've been here for 20 years at the Council on Foreign Relations, but I also spent years at the Brookings Institution, at uh, the Institute for Strategic Studies in, uh, in London, at the Carnegie Endowment. So uh, I've spent probably, uh, I don't know, 25 or 30 years in think tanks throughout my career. I believe that think tanks occupy a, an important place in the national conversation. On one hand, you have universities. Universities often deal with uh, more theoretical concerns. They're very uh, concerned about methodology, often uh, quantitative analysis. They're, they tend to be more removed from uh, matters of uh, policy. And then on the other hand, at the other end of the spectrum, you have people say in government or business and to be honest, they are busy. Uh, I've worked for four presidents at the Pentagon, the State Department, the White House. And when you're in government, uh, you have all these things coming across your desk and it's your challenge to keep up. I think it was Henry Kissinger who said that when you go into government, you no longer have the time to generate to intellectual capital. You're, what you do is you tend to spend it down. You tend to use it because you're so busy meeting the challenges that come into your inbox. What I believe is valuable then about think tanks is they occupy the space in between the academia and, say, government. And think tanks have the time to do serious analysis. But they also have the responsibility and the obligation to produce what we call policy relevant analysis. Uh, it's got to be think tanks have to produce work that explains what is going on or, or might be going on about its uh, significance and also where possible think tanks have an obligation to provide policy recommendations. And that could be of use uh, either for citizens or, 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 or governments. And I think that that's what makes them important, what makes them, uh, what makes them uh, unique. Yeah. In the United States, what makes uh, the think tank unique, again, is you're, you're producing intellectual work. Again, that's policy relevant. We're also a place where you can train people. There's probably more than a dozen people in the current uh, Biden administration who worked at the Council on Foreign Relations. You mentioned our intern program. Uh, over the course of the next decade, we will train more than a thousand interns, hundreds of young uh, research assistants and associates, uh, hundreds of fellows. So think tanks are in the business of producing ideas uh, but also of producing or developing uh, people who can then assume more responsible positions in, in either government or business, journalism, or in the foreign policy uh, conversation. Uh, you know, we're lucky here at the Council on Foreign Relations. We have uh, fellows producing books and articles. You mentioned Foreign Affairs Magazine. It's the leading magazine or journal uh, in the world. We do it with meetings. We've also gone into the business of education. Uh, what, we, what we are trying to do is provide uh, educational materials for young people in high schools, as well as colleges and universities in order to teach them about the world, why it matters, how it operates and so forth. So I believe that think tanks have uh, enormous opportunities, but also significant uh, responsibilities here at the Council on Foreign Relations can put forward ideas or recommendations. They can do it in articles, say in foreign affairs. They can do it in books. Uh, they can also do it in conversations like this. One thing we started years ago, probably about 10 years ago, I started here at the Council on Foreign Relations is something we call the Council of Councils. And what we've done is we bring together maybe the representatives of maybe two dozen think tanks around the world where we, dis we discuss issues of 
uh, global governance, how the world is, uh, is tackling or maybe uh, should tackle various global uh, challenges. Think tanks can participate in track two or track one and a half dialogues. Think tanks can have meetings like this one. So again, uh, by the person to person side, as well as the intellectual side, I believe that uh, think tanks have an important role to play. Again, I've been, I've been in government uh, and I know, you know when you're in government, you're busy. You're also under certain constraints when you're in government because you have to represent official policy. And when you're working in a think tank, you have, you have more space. You have a little bit more room to, to offer up suggestions. And when you say things, it doesn't have the weight of official policy. So I, I appreciate the difference from when I used to be in the government and I would be speaking for the government. And now I'm here and I, I no longer speak for the government and it gives me a certain degree of freedom. Now, what I say may have less weight. I understand that because I no longer represent the government. On the other hand, uh, it has the weight of the content, whatever, if there are good ideas, they're good ideas. And again, when you speak from a think tank, you you have freedom. And what therefore can be useful is these kinds of dialogues can be a place where ideas can be introduced. And then if they are good introduced, they are good ideas, then they can be brought into official channels. And I think that is one of the uh, ways that think tanks, as you say, can bridge differences. And it can expose people in government to new ideas. And these people can then uh, act on those uh, ideas. So there's all sorts of ways uh, in which uh, outsiders can influence what insiders do. Thank you. Stay healthy, stay well, and I look forward to seeing you.